we had uh, github copilot fixing some uh, minor bugs so yes it's actually working well if you have your eyes open and don't move much uh, in terms of tracing as well so that's the green line i don't know yeah there seem to be some uh, so we're getting uh, we got all the code into gpt4 and uh, because we need some broader context for this we also have two descriptions for the application that's a more recent one that keeps uh, BSing a bit we hopefully we'll uh, fix that eventually well, let's say about commercial well, it's obviously only experimental prototype to make sure it says uh, no commercial use no medical use uh, so on and so forth okay so this flask application so yeah we're using uh, flask uh, using eye tracking as a cv2 so it's working fine now for the eye tracking yeah we're using media pipe so that's the main uh, the main library and then uh, numpy as well so we're adding those frames uh, i think it was from github copilot was able to do this for us uh, quickly we did the uh, add the, this line later well there's an obvious difference between um, eye tracking and pupil tracking so it's a whole uh, different ball game um so we have the code in uh, a gpt4 yeah we had some issues with it we had an error which it actually fixed but then uh, we improved the a gener a frame generation function as well let's actually checks for empty frames now because if i move outside the before it used to just fail just drop out now it keeps going i should have a printout of um empty frame somewhere no it's still dropping out it's the same error yes yeah it doesn't seem to be able to uh, sort uh, this one out no it's actually ah oh, no it is the same yeah empty like an empty array empty array okay we might uh, deal with that one later yes obviously one eye is jumpier than the other and one good thing about the uh, gpt is that we actually can uh, generate the images for a uh, for it let's do that quickly do a few just pop them straight away in yeah github copilot obviously cannot do this i uh, wish there was a video wonder if you can upload a video of of it uh, working so essentially trying to get it to uh, fix the jittery uh, business for us uh, so we have some uh, jitter in the pupil detection eye detection working well but the pupil is getting um, not detected very well uh, can we also go over a, an ability to display the whole processing through turning the image into grayscale because that might need uh, tweaking the level of uh, grayscaling uh, can you also explain how the pupil is being currently detected you have all the code several factors yeah it's pretty good at this uh, explaining these things much better than a university lecturer for example that might well mainly have hundreds of uh, students to take care of and also not be the most patient teacher so doing the grayscale conversion just read that grayscale conversion the region of interest ROI around the eye is converted to grayscale which reduces the complexity of the image and helps in detecting the darker regions that represent the pupil uh, yeah we want to know how that exactly works like um can we actually view the grayscale image uh, somehow or potentially 
not overlaid but uh, maybe a button to provide an option to say the grayscale image half circle transform the adjusted grayscale image is used to detect circles that represent the pupil it might not always find a circle especially if the contrast is not optimal or if the pupil is not the most prominent circular feature in the ROI yeah can we also visualize the hue circle transform darkest point fallback if no circle is found the code falls back to locating the darkest point in the ROI which is assumed to be the pupil ROI size make sure the size of the ROI is appropriate if it's too large it might include non-pupil areas causing instability if it's too small it might miss the pupil entirely when there's movement okay with the ROI size a uh, can we make sure that the ROI is actually the blue square around the eye yeah i'm not sure about the temporal smoothing that uh, reduced the quality the detection quality the speed is suggesting to make the algorithm slower is it yes displaying a second window sounds good uh, can we are you gonna be generating the code or get the prompts for github copilot to do it can we also display the current uh, frame rate? Now, the other thing that I would like you to touch on is the fact that we actually have two web cameras uh, positioned side by side. Would it help that uh, each camera will be doing detection on each eye? Yeah, we might as well. It doesn't sound like it's going to generate any code. We might as well get the GitHub Copilot to do it. All right, because the, the actual uh, video footage is uh, displayed uh, using something else. Uh, so grayscale will be happening in the uh, eye tracking pie. So we have obviously our index uh, HTML. By the way, it currently has two descriptions of this application. And both of them are pretty bad. So eventually we'll get uh, GPT-4 to rewrite it. I think originally it was done by Copilot. That's why. The quality is not great because it's not looking at the overall context of the whole project so it's just looking at the individual files you can get it to look at the whole uh, context but uh, for example if i use uh, this to as prompts in theory it should find where the code it should be changed or added so it's determining the workspace structure deciding which uh, information to collect right so in find pupil are we doing i am show in here no the find pupil is in the eye tracking pi file but what was the change so it's creating two windows one showing the grayscale and one showing the circles I thought it could uh, overlay the two. Can the circles be overlaid over the grayscale in one image? I'm not sure if it. Yeah, you see, now it's looking at the specific uh, lines of code. What? Well, so we were in the correct uh, uh, region of the code, so that's fine. A single window showing the grayscale ROI with the circles overlaid. We need to call CV2 wait key one. So is it waiting for a keyboard response or something? To update the window and handle the user input. Why? It's returning the same stuff. By the way, if you haven't checked out bionicchaos.com, please do so all the current tools which is the waveform a feature extraction detection and the webcam eye tracking will eventually come up on this site as well currently we're just testing them uh, locally but we'll try to share it with you as quickly as possible it just has to do something useful it doesn't have to be perfect Another thing, by the way, that we are doing, we're looking at this um, data set from the Child Mind Institute. It was a healthy brain network. That's what the data set is called. There's about a thousand 
recordings uh, from thousand patients. The dataset is uh, publicly available under Creative Commons license, which is great for us because this is what we do as well. Apparently, I didn't download the correct uh, file. Just looking at one uh, subject, but then realized it doesn't have the full uh, phenotopic file, even though it doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm still trying to figure it out. Back to this quickly. Just trying to improve on this uh, eye tracking uh, system. Who's selecting the find pupil? Might as well just comment it out just so we. Our kit is not working at the moment. So I'm not, uh, not actually using it or not properly using it. All right, and this will. Uh, yes, when you update that file, it gives a fatal um, error which ideally we will not but at the moment we just have to rerun the application in the window there's a separate window and it's not updating and that's obviously running in uh, python yeah so that that's uh, github copilot uh, unfortunately it doesn't have the uh, the full context for the whole uh, for everything we are trying to do. So let's just go back to GPT-4. To confirm okay. that the blue squares are indeed being drawn around the eyes as intended, you should be able to see these squares in the live video feed your application provides. If they're not visible, ensure that the coordinates and dimensions used to draw the rectangles using CV2 rectangle are correct and that they're being drawn on the frame that is being displayed. This is actually quite important. Uh, let's check the have the blue rectangle squares yet they are not the ROI are they? If the pupil detection sometimes jumps to the eyelids or other dark regions it's a sign that the ROI may indeed be too large you need to adjust the size to better fit the actual eye area temporal smoothing will average the detected positions over several frames which can help reduce jitter while it might slightly reduce the real-time nature of detection since it's averaging over past positions it generally won't make the algorithm slower it's a trade-off between smoothness and real-time feedback. And it's okay, I don't mind it to be slower. It's actually seem to be jumping around too fast at the moment. To display the current frame rate, you can calculate the number of frames processed in one second and display this on the video feed using CV2, but text. Yeah, we do want to do that. Um, because there is a chance that uh, I'm not in the correct file. I'll just use the at uh, workspace I uh, want to do this bit we want to display the frame rate onto the footage and generate frames yeah which is I was in the wrong file this should this display the frame rate on the top left corner of the video feed it will be updated each frame yeah and this um, well that's the thing it would be a different uh, to the frame rate of the camera. Let's just double check that we don't have any placeholders in that function. Doesn't look like. Right, so we have the frame rate, which is good. It's 30, 31, whatever. Yeah, this one should be showing us the grayscale ROI. And that's wrong. Well, because first we don't want to display it in Python. We want to display it on the front page. Oh, keeps uh, opening that bit. Yeah, I want to get rid of that, go back to the previous find pupil function to rerun the application. Right, we have to do that bit again. The frame rate is crucial in eye tracking because it dictates how smooth the tracking will be and how quickly the system can respond to movement. Higher frame rates can capture more data points and provide a smoother tracking experience. For eye tracking, a camera that can provide a consistent 30 FPS or higher is usually recommended. Yeah, we're using 30 why it's dropping down to 27 or something using two web cameras positioned side by side could potentially improve detection by having each camera focus on one eye 
This could provide more data and reduce occlusion, but would also double the data processing requirements. The algorithm would need to be adapted to handle input from two cameras and merge the data accurately. Yeah, we might do it as a, a potentially separate uh, separate tool, like a tool update. Uh, dealing with one camera is difficult enough. For the changes and visualization features you want to implement, you can modify the process underscore frame function in your Python code. For example, to display the grayscale image. So where am I actually doing that? Uh, not exactly sure. And for displaying the circles detected by the half circle transform. So what did it? No, it wasn't doing it. Was it? It was. Uh, it was uh, plotting a separate, a separate window. Remember to update the code when necessary to include these changes and ensure that you have CV2, wait key, and CV2. Destroy all windows at the appropriate places in your code to handle the display windows correctly. Lastly, regarding GitHub Copilot, it can certainly help generate code snippets based on your prompts. However, you'll need to feed it specific tasks or issues you're facing, and it will provide suggestions based on its training. It's a powerful tool, but remember that its suggestions should still be reviewed and tested by a human programmer. Now that's fine. Um, so can which? Um, so currently the suggestions the, to use uh, CV2 I'm show uh, is fine, but I do want to display the extra window uh, on the front end, so um, the end user can uh, see how the pupil detection actually working also any idea why my fps dropped from 30 to 15 that would be good to know yes i suspect we'll have to transfer more data to the front end which is fine i actually want to uh, for everything to be down on the front end as well that would be great because then I don't have to use as much electricity. So I'm going to do it in this uh, main JS because it's currently only 50 lines of code as opposed to 85 in eye tracking and another 70 in the Flask application. That might uh, need restructuring of the whole code. So let's see how we go. Displaying the pupil detection process on the front end for the user to see is a bit more complex than just popping up a window with CV2, I am show, which only displays on the server side. To achieve this in a web application, you would need to send the process frames back to the client's browser. Yeah, this is not ideal, is it? I want to do the whole processing in JavaScript. I wasn't actually listening. I did suggest to add a button which will toggle between the uh, real view and the uh, uh, grayscale with the circle hue circle visualization i'm thinking uh, restructuring the whole thing so um all the image processing is happening in javascript i mean let alone uh, this thing is not uh, working well very well as it is so unless i do this then it's working better yeah we want to see how the the grayscale stuff might need tweaking now it's back to 30 fps so obviously we can get the uh, 60 fps from two cameras i mean we can get a gopro or something uh, i don't know what's it's a uh, uh, maximum frames per second will be like a thousand or so i would imagine increased processing load if you've added more processing steps like the pupil detection visualizations this can significantly increase the computational load and decrease the frame rate Network bandwidth. If you're streaming video, network bandwidth can be a bottleneck. If the bandwidth is insufficient for the stream's data rate, frames will be dropped to compensate. So how does it currently... Yeah, currently it's not uh, great, is it? Because uh, we streaming... Because you will be streaming the footage to the website. Because in comparison, if you look at... Uh, let's close this for a sec. If you look at the hand gesture thing... Yeah, this one is doing everything in JavaScript. It was a false detection. We'll 
do long ones, short ones. And as uh, in music, music kill, that's what a head scratch sounds like. Um, the good thing about this, but this one, when you use it, which is already up there, can uh, try it out. I do not uh, use electricity because it's all JavaScript, and I also don't have to post anything on uh, GitHub because uh, JavaScript just should be available in the browser, so you can just download the source code. Um, so probably we'll do the try and do the eye tracking in the same fashion. So yeah, you can try this one out, especially because it has some advertisement. So you'll be supporting the project. Now, get back to this. We might need to restructure the whole thing. Yeah, originally we told us to told it to do a Flask application. That's why it's uh, heavily relying on the on Python generating frames. Yeah, there was some error business when there's no frame, no, um, well, no person, no eyes in the footage. It was uh, failing. Yeah, with the tensor, what's it give me? Boo. Something to do with the camera, is it? So one camera is not being used. No, it's actually working. I don't know what's all this. Uh, well, right, when the other thing is when you do use uh, a JavaScript alone, then you are relying, so I can't guarantee that it's going to work at all on your machine because, well, I'm running a GPU and everything, so uh, I don't know how quickly, if at all, um, it will work on uh, your in your browser, on your machine. Yeah, I know the music generation doesn't work well on the on mobile. So I have to use those uh, equivalent uh, JavaScript uh, libraries for running this. Not sure if it's going to work at all. Ideally, I will find some sort of balance between the uh, back and front end. Let me know what you think. Is it possible to move uh, most of the processing as much as possible to the front end? So is the equivalent uh, JavaScript uh, library that can do eye tracking? Eye tracking. Eye tracking. It's hopeless. We ideally would like to display the output the result of the eye tracker and all the processing stages, a grayscale, hue transform, so on and so forth, um, on the front page, on the HTML. It's not a good sign when it's thinking that long. Wouldn't TensorFlow be an overkill for this? Moving processing to the front end can definitely help distribute the computational load and may improve the performance of your application. For eye tracking in the browser, you can use JavaScript libraries that are designed to work with facial and eye detection. One popular library is TensorFlow, JS with models like BlazeFace for face detection, which you can use as a starting point for eye tracking. Yeah, because I don't think a media pipe does eye tracking anyway. Yeah, this eye tracking module, where is it even coming from? Well, right, that's the media, that would be the media pipe stuff. No, sorry, that's the, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's how little Python I know. And that's importing the eye tracking pie and the eye tracking pie using media pipe. And media pipe just does the, the it, it, it detects the eyes, not the pupils. Yes, yeah, so we don't want to just display it in I am sure because that will be only in the back end. It won't be accessible to you. Yeah, this is a very high level approach. It doesn't have any. Face detection. Use a pre-trained TensorFlow JS model to detect the face in the video stream from the webcam. 
Um, okay. Eye detection. Once you have the face landmarks, you can locate the eyes and create a region of interest, ROI, around them. Grayscale conversion. Convert the ROI to grayscale using JavaScript's Canvas API. Yeah, there probably really something like that exists, but it will be really good for us to display the whole uh, processing, ideally on the same window. But uh, if another window is necessary, it should be fine to... Pupil detection. Use image processing techniques to detect the pupil within the ROI. You might have to implement the logic for this manually, as there may not be a ready-made JavaScript library for pupil detection that's as straightforward as OpenSea's half-circle transform. Um, pupil detection. Use image processing techniques to detect the pupil within the ROI. You might have to implement the logic for this manually, as there may not be a ready-made JavaScript library for pupil detection that's as straightforward as OpenSea's half-circle transform. I think I'm wondering if it still should be a Flask application, but because uh, ev eventually we might do something on the back end but uh, yes rely on the uh, javascript as much as possible visualization draw the detected eyes and pupils on the canvas and update it in real time as the video stream processes optimization since javascript runs on the client's browser you need to ensure that the code is optimized to run efficiently without causing lag in the user interface well right that's uh, kind of not uh, up to me um i'll be testing it on well my machine uh, which is a beast um it's a 3090 ti gpu so on and so forth and um uh, intel i9 but then uh, i could also test it on a standard laptop as well that's as much as i could be doing testing you'll have to let me know how does it work for you to display the output and processing stages on the HTML page, you can set up multiple less than canvas greater than elements or less than video greater than elements that are updated with the various stages of processing, original video, grayscale image, eye detection bounding boxes, etc. Keep in mind that while moving processing to the front end can reduce server load, it also places more demands on the client's device. This approach assumes that the end users have sufficiently powerful devices to handle the real-time processing. You would then have a JavaScript file, eye tracking, JS, that handles the TensorFlow, JS model loading, face detection, eye detection, grayscale conversion, and pupil detection. This file would also be responsible for updating the output canvas with the visual results of these processing stages. Yeah, I like this approach better considering I'll be paying less for electricity. Remember to check the privacy implications of processing biometric data like eye movements on the client side, as well as ensuring that your application is compliant with any relevant data protection regulations. Well, right, so if the last point uh, currently with the Flask application, does it mean um, that we are sending the video footage on to the server? And that's not uh, ideal if that's the case. Now, I'm not sure if we should start fresh with another version of this application. Uh, shall we still keep at the Flask application just in case we do need to do something on the server? Uh, however, rely mainly on JavaScript code. Also, ideally, we would like to do everything in one window, but if uh, two windows are necessary for displaying the original footage and the grayscale with the hue transform, circle transform then go for it by the way don't mind you to be a little bit um, funny if you feel like it yes in your current flask application setup the video footage is being sent from the client's browser to the server for processing this isn't ideal if you're dealing with bandwidth issues or privacy concerns since raw video data is quite sensitive yeah we don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to say it. so we're definitely getting rid of this uh, current flask application the way it works is uh, sending the video footage onto the cloud uh, onto my server we do not want that keeping the flask app and adding javascript for the heavy lifting of eye tracking can give us the best of both worlds we get to keep the server for any necessary back-end tasks while offloading real-time intensive processing to the client side yeah that sounds better the tracking JS file will handle the capturing of video from the webcam, face detection, eye detection, and pupil tracking. Unfortunately, I can't whip up an entire library's worth of code right here, but I can guide you on the structure. <laughs> uh, 
I'm sure it has no trouble generating the whole code. But yes, we will um, do GitHub Copilot, considering we have those uh, 40 messages per three hours. Don't want to overload GPT, so we'll be uh, using Copilot as well. So it's kind of good that it's provided the... Um, doesn't have... Ah, yeah, the video footage from camera. Uh, so let's close this one for a second by the way if you haven't checked the uh, bunny chaos yet please do so and don't forget to provide your feedback everything we're currently doing eventually will go on this site as well how do i actually get the um, copilot to start developing for simplicity and a seamless user experience we aim to keep everything in one window however if it turns out we need a pop-out window to properly show our grayscale wizardry we won't shy away from it after all, sometimes you need to open a new window to let some fresh air in. <laughs> uh, you're actually funny. Not too funny, but uh, just funny. In conclusion, you're now equipped with a blueprint for turning your application into a front-end powerhouse, with a little server-side magic kept in your back pocket for when you need it. Keep the server lean and mean, ready for action, and let the client's browser do the heavy eye lifting. Time to get coding. Okay, can you list all the files that we need, all the folders and the project structure? And can you provide the whole script for each file separately? I don't mind you uh, having templates for GitHub Copilot to fill out, but I need you to generate the whole code still and yeah, also hopefully it will be working better than what we had in the python flask application that we want would not be using anymore so i assume i don't need the eye tracking python file and also do i need to separate the main js or tracking js is the main and only JavaScript file. Yes, yeah, so that's what we had before. And this is the new structure. Yeah, we have one uh, JavaScript requirements file. Yeah, we have this info file, but it's okay, it doesn't know about it. Call it whatever, it doesn't matter for now. Here's an outline of the content for each file. So we can get rid of this one. And we do not have a main JS. We're getting rid of this one as well. So we only have uh, HTML, tracking JS, and uh, app. Why? If uh, hopefully this will just remain empty because I, I don't actually need any data to be sent uh, to my server. I want you to be able to do the eye tracking in your browser. Keep your data secure on your own machine. Sounds like a good option. So requirement file just have the flask. Why is it a different version to what we had before? So we won't be using media pipe and open CV Python anymore. Just check the Python code. This will be simple, as simple as possible. A index HTML should be straightforward as well using these two libraries and this is the tracking js text base eyes a draw detection video element tracking js will be your main and only javascript file containing the eye tracking logic that's good so we got rid of main uh, js file since we are moving the processing to the client side you don't need the i underscore tracking python file anymore yeah we got rid of them make sure you have tensorflow JS and any other required libraries included in your HTML file, as shown in the index, HTML. You might need additional libraries or scripts depending on how complex your eye tracking logic gets and what features you decide to implement. So make sure these files are not made up, and they actually have the code copyright Google. That's okay. We're essentially all working for Google now. This setup assumes a simplified model where all the heavy processing is done on the front end. The Flask service role is minimal, mainly serving the static files and templates. 
Remember that implementing a full-fledged eye tracking system in JavaScript can be quite complex and may require additional libraries and a lot of fine tuning. Uh, okay, so I want to access the user webcam. Why? Copilot, can you just do it? No. Why not? A hey, GitHub Copilot. I'm like complaining <laughs> to <laughs> about another robot to this robot. Okay, GPT-4, can you help me? Um, GitHub Copilot is misbehaving. <laughs> it does not want to generate the code. Um, can you do something? <laughs> Just generate the functions yourself, like streaming the video to the front end and the errors, use a model to detect faces and find the eyes within the face, then uh, draw detections on the canvas. This could be a bounding box for the eye region. Maybe make sure it's not uh, too large. And then we are missing a bunch of functions. Uh, we should have had the hue transform that will find the circles or are you suggesting a different way of doing it so that's the overall thing it uh, works at all now also have the um, camera being taken taken over and should be settings of this uh, page should be like a camera icon i don't see it I know it's being taken over by something. I think we're getting stuck with this one. Might move on um, to the fuzzy logic stuff. So we won't be making much progress here. All right. It sounds like GitHub Copilot might be acting a bit like a stubborn robot. So let's roll up our sleeves and draft some code to get you moving. I'll provide you with more fleshed out functions for the tasks you've described. Remember that these will be high-level functions and you'll need to fine-tune them to fit your application perfectly. Okay, so we have yeah, TensorFlow.js and BlazeFace. It's a good name. Creating a model. Loading, sorry, loading a model, not creating a model. This should definitely be better than what we currently have. A yeah, GitHub Copal, I didn't want to generate the code. I don't know why. The half circle transform specifically is not available in TensorFlow, JS, or BlazeFace. However, you can attempt to detect the pupils using a different approach, like analyzing the grayscale values within the eye regions and looking for dark circles. This would involve custom code and a good understanding of image processing techniques in JavaScript. Are you sure there is no a JavaScript a code for library or something for detecting pupil or I mean, if there is no hue circle transform, surely there is a grayscale transform that should be available. So currently we are doing, we're starting the video stream, detecting the face, extracting eye regions, drawing the eyes. Okay, that's not enough, is it? Yeah, I'm gonna detect the pupil. I gonna generate a whole uh, function for detect pupil eye region. Let's see if um, Copilot woke up. No, don't understand how it works. Let's try shit. Generate this function. Okay, GitHub Copilot actually doing this. Return darkest point. We are not using it at the moment. The function creates a canvas, draws the eye region on it, converts the image to grayscale, and then iterates over the pixel data to find the darkest point and returns it as an XY coordinate object. That's interesting, but it's not currently. Uh, being used is it is not used just pop the whole code into 
a GPT. Yep. So now they compete with one another. Let's turn the text to a uh, speech to test text for a sec. So Copal generated um it, it changed the detect faces function. Sometimes it's actually quite handy when it's providing links. Uh, not at the moment. Yeah, detect faces function is currently not being used in the provided code. Sorry, the detect pupil is not currently being used. Could call it within detect faces function after you extracted the eye regions. Here's how you could modify the text faces. And what did the uh, GPT say? The code you shared seems to be a good start for setting up the face and eye detection using TensorFlow, JS, and Blaze face on the front end. What we need to do next is to integrate the detect pupil function properly into the flow, as well as handling the grayscale transformation and drawing everything onto the canvas. Here's a more complete example of how you might modify the detect faces function to include pupil detection. Okay, so let's do a different functions. I kind of trust the GPT-4 more than a co-pilot, but happy to try both. So both eventually drawing left and right pupils. GPT-4 code makes this prediction as well. It um, waits for the model estimate faces. And uh, maybe copilot code is better. Currently I don't have anything running because we decided not to continue with the Flask application that we had. So we rewriting the whole load started from scratch essentially so we definitely would not need that and it said it another function which is similar to what gpt4 did gpt4 also has the draw face which copilot didn't suggest at all now the other thing is we have a, we also have a problem. So we have uh, two webcams connected to our machine. One is being used. It kind of understands what I'm trying to do. Well, one of them is being um, used by something. I need to be able to can I use uh, GPT-3 for a sec. On uh, Ubuntu, I have two webcams connected. Uh, one is being used. Legit. The other one is being hogged by something else. Can I check what it is and uh, reset potentially both uh, cameras? To check which process is using your second webcam, you can use the LSOF command, short for list open files. Open a terminal and type. Yeah, Replace dev video one with the path to your second webcam. This command will show you which process is accessing the webcam. If you want to reset both cameras, you can try restarting the webcam services or unloading and reloading the webcam kernel modules. Here's how. Replace less than module underscore name greater than with the name of the webcam kernel module. You can find the module name by running ls mod grab video. It seems like the webcam kernel modules are loaded properly. The UVC video module is responsible for handling USB video class, UVC, compliant devices, which includes most webcams. Since both webcams are detected and the necessary modules are loaded, you can try restarting the webcam service to see if it resolves the issue with the second webcam. If the second webcam still doesn't work after restarting the service, you may want to check if any other applications or processes are using it by running. If you identify any processes using the webcam, you can terminate them or close the applications to free up the webcam for other uses. Additionally, make sure that the second webcam is properly connected and not being used by any other hardware or software. First, let's try restarting the UDEV service, which manages device events. Then, you can try reloading the UVC video module, which handles the webcam. These commands will unload and reload the UVC video module, essentially resetting the webcam driver. After running these commands, check if both webcams are recognized and available for use. If the second webcam still doesn't work, you might need to investigate further to identify any potential conflicts or issues with the hardware or software configuration. It seems that the UVC video module is currently in use, which prevents it from being unloaded and reloaded. In this case, you can try stopping any processes or applications that might be using the webcam before attempting to reload the module again. It's kind of hopeless. Okay, which camera? Because I have two and they have the same names. 
doesn't help, does it? Yeah, one of the cameras just got stuck. Okay, that doesn't work. Get this error in JavaScript as well. I have an event list now. Nah, I'm sure we're doing this already, aren't we? Oops. Don't actually do that. It's the main function. Don't have an event list now. Nah. Still don't have an event listener. Do we need an event listener here in this function? Okay. <laughs> Can you modify the function as needed? Uh, what's an uh, ESP32 cam module? I copy from the chat. Uh, something uh, wrong with Git. Something wrong with my camera in general. So it works. No, that's the frozen one that I have in the stream. IoT, yeah, run away from anything called IoT, but I need a server for it. What? Yeah, so we we want to do it in JavaScript only, so that doesn't seem doesn't seem right. Want to do it in a simple way, kind of similar to what we have here. Is this working? Yeah, so that's... Brought, this video brought to you by... Well, no, it's not sponsored. <laughs> so we close, <laughs> we close that. Um, it should be as simple as this. And that one, uh, JavaScript alone, that works okay. So I don't know why this one doesn't. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. There is no... That's 3.5. Close that. Oh, why this window is so funny? Hey. Anything wrong with this code, we do not have the video footage displayed. Can you also check the HTML and the Python code? Yep. I see. You're looking to get everything tied up nicely. Let's walk through each part of your code to ensure they're all set to work together harmoniously. Your HTML is mostly set. But I notice you're missing a less than video greater than element to display the webcam stream. You need to add it so that the video element in your JavaScript has a source to play from. The autoplay and plays inline attributes ensure that the video plays right away and inline on the web page, respectively. The Python code looks good. It's serving the single HTML page you have and should be working fine. Just make sure you have the static folder set up correctly in your Flask project structure, so the tracking JS file can be served without issues. There are a few adjustments needed in your JavaScript code. The start video stream function is not called anywhere after the model loads. You should call start video stream within the main function before setting the interval for detect faces. The detect pupil function seems to be attempting to draw on a non-existent eye region. You need to get the actual pixel data from the video feed. This would involve creating a new canvas element or drawing onto an existing canvas, then cropping to the eye region based on the landmarks. The pupil detection logic is sound in theory, but it does not account for the context of the eyes within the entire video frame. You need to calculate the exact coordinates of the eye regions within the full frame to crop them accurately. Let's fix the call to the start video stream in the main function. Remember, the pupil detection through the darkest point method is a simplified approach and may not be robust in various lighting conditions or if the user is wearing glasses. In a real-world application, you would likely need a more sophisticated method, possibly involving machine learning or more complex image processing techniques. Finally, make sure your web server is set up to serve the static folder where tracking JS resides. This is typically done no. by setting the static Using underscore folder parameter in your camera. Flask app okay, or by placing your static files in the default static directory. Okay. So my eyes funny they move in and out <laughs> okay so obviously there's no pupil detection what did it say about the pupil detection i wasn't listening and a quick fix for the detect pupil function to clarify the eye region remember the pupil detection through the darkest point method is a simplified approach and may not be robust in various lighting conditions or if the user is wearing glasses for a real world application you would likely need a more sophisticated method possibly involving machine learning or more complex image processing techniques okay this is already doing this isn't it 
So what's wrong with this function and how do you suggest changing it? The, it does return the x, y coordinates and brightness levels as well. Can you explain? The function detect pupil that you've provided is based on a reasonable approach to find the darkest point in an image, which is assumed to be the pupil. The function, however, has a few issues that need to be addressed. Eye region extraction. The eye region parameter appears to be a placeholder. For this function to work, eye region should be an actual image, or canvas context, of the eye. You need to extract the eye region from the video feed first, which involves more steps than just passing a parameter. Canvas manipulation. The function creates a new canvas element every time it's called. Yeah, this is not efficient, cool, is especially if it's being called frequently in a loop. It's better to create a single canvas element and reuse it. Grayscale conversion. The grayscale conversion loop is correct, but remember that this alone does not find the pupil. It's just the first step in processing the image to make the pupil, usually the darkest part, stand out more clearly. Darkest point calculation. The function iterates through every pixel to find the darkest one, which is an intensive operation. It's important to note that the darkest point may not always be the pupil, especially if there are shadows or other artifacts in the image. Here is a revised version of the function, with some conceptual fixes. To use this function, you call it with the eye coordinates extracted from the landmarks provided by the face detection model and the video element from which the frames are being captured. A few things to keep in mind. This function now assumes that the CTX is the context of a canvas element that has the same dimensions as the video element. This canvas is used for image processing and is not necessarily the same canvas where you draw the tracking results. The darkest point detection might still pick up false positives if there are reflections or shadows. More sophisticated methods might involve thresholding the image to isolate the pupil or even using machine learning based approaches. Performance can be an issue, especially if you're processing high resolution video. You may need to downscale the image for analysis or use web workers to process the data without freezing the main thread. It's loading forever as well. It's not much different, is it? Except that one eye is really jumpy now. Am I calling it correctly? Video element. I'm not using the video element, am I? Because previously we didn't have a video element. Can you fix the detect pupil call the way this function is being called? It has another variable as an input. Let's see if GitHub Copilot can do it. Why is it talking about detect faces? I need to update the how detect pupil function is being called. Are we? Inputting the model. No, it's the video element. Oops. I calling it model. It's the video element. Left people. Let's, let's comment that out quickly. It's loading forever. It's a bit funny like this, isn't it? Oh, what's it trying to do? It's bad. Good thing about a GPT as opposed to Copilot is that we can, well, actually, we can bombard it with stuff. We can add an image to it that it will surely not ignore. And we can ask it to fix the following code that it will surely do perfectly well. There is an issue with how the um, detect pupil function is being called now after it was changed can we fix that and any other suggestions to improve the pupil eye detector based on the image that i just loaded that i just uploaded uh, there are two images uploaded please uh, check Make any suggestions as to how to improve the code. Yep. Going in circle with this one. My other camera, no, my other camera is still frozen. Based on the images you've uploaded and the code snippets you've shared, let's address the issues and suggest improvements for the eye, pupil, detection process. Function call. The detect pupil function is being called with parameters left eye and model, but it should be called with left eye and video element. The model parameter is not used in the detect pupil function. Parameter mismatch. The eye parameter in the detect pupil function is expected to be an object with properties x, y, width, and height. However, the extract eyes regions function is returning an array with landmark points. These points need to be processed to create a bounding box for the eyes. Dark point detection. The current method for detecting the darkest point assumes that the pupil is the darkest point in the eye region. This might not always be true due to shadows, reflections, or lighting conditions. 
Modify the extract eyes region's function to calculate the bounding box around the eyes. Implement a more robust method for pupil detection, potentially involving thresh holding or other image processing techniques. Here is how you might adjust the detect faces function and the detect pupil call. Yeah, one thing is for sure, Copal is generating code much faster. But it uh, doesn't always generate working code. So I prefer slower than the uh, uh, rubbish code. Well, sim to have corrected that. Considering the images, it appears there may be some inaccuracies in the detection, possibly due to the bounding box size or the assumption that the darkest point is the pupil. Here are some improvements you can make. Dynamic thresholding. Instead of looking for the darkest point, apply a dynamic threshold that adapts for lighting conditions to better isolate the pupil. Morphological operations. Use operations such as erosion and dilation to remove noise and small reflections that might be confused with the pupil. Region of interest adjustment. Fine-tune the size of the bounding box around the eyes. The size should be large enough to include the whole eye, but not so large that it includes other features that could be mistaken for the pupil. Machine learning. If feasible, consider using a machine learning approach to directly detect the pupil within the eye region, which can be more accurate than heuristic methods. Please note that implementing these suggestions involves more complex image processing, which may need to be done on a server with more powerful libraries like OpenCV or by employing machine learning models that are trained specifically for pupil detection. It's actually drawing the pupil as well. It's kind of hopeless. So you will try this code <laughs> by the way it says some improvements that you can make now how about you make them and i'll just tell you what to do <laughs> is that how we treat a robot <laughs> no better be nice before they you know take over the human race and we'll remember everything a oh, nice little robot nice little robot detect faces but window is not uh, scaling properly as well. It's not fun to use. It's just regenerating code that we already have. No why? What's called the uh, left eye box when the comment says circles. That's the same. It's hallucinating a bit. Right, the draw pupil. This extract. I region function probably was missing stuff. I don't know what's up. It doesn't work, does it? Those red boxes meant to be the eye detector. It's not drawing the, the eyes. It's hallucinating quite a bit. Might have a start fresh or move on to another tool. Let's just remove uh, a commented out code that didn't do anything. Detect pupil doesn't do much. There is no pupil detection. Um, the red boxes keep being redrawn. So the eyes and the overall eye detection and the pupil detection are being redrawn. Are the circles they meant to be the pupil detector? Wait a sec. They, well, they're moving with their head, that's fine. They're also moving inside the head. Need really for them to be overlaid on top of the head. Uh, is that an option? If the circles are the pupil, they need to be smaller and ideally overlaid on top of the video footage. In the Grand Safari of eye tracking applications, this app is aiming to join the pride of lions. It's on the prowl to compete with the best, offering accessibility and convenience by not requiring any fancy equipment, just a webcam and a good internet connection. So there you have it, folks, a flask app that's trying to follow your gaze like a puppy follows a treat. It's got potential, but it might still chase its tail a few times before it catches it. Remember, all great tech starts as a recipe that needs tweaking. Maybe the salt is your JavaScript logic, or the pepper is your Python server, season to taste, and don't be afraid to stir the pot. And hey, if we didn't have bugs, developers would be out of a job, right? So, here's to those little critters that keep us coding into the wee hours. May your coffee be strong, your compiler understanding, and your console logs verbose and informative. That's all from this kitchen for now. Stay coding, and remember, in the world of programming, sometimes you're the bug, and sometimes you're the debugger.